But you're adding another layer yeah. of your fiber. I'm in between another, the, mm -hmm. over the Yeah, just fire. over the fire star that I just put in there. Not much, I'm noticing. It's just like a light coating. Yeah, just coating. a thin layer. Okay. Because this board will hold up to about an ounce and a half. And how, how much yarn does that spin out to? It's not, it doesn't make a whole lot. You have to make quite a few Rolex to get enough to... To do any kind yeah, of... Yeah, a lot of people will buy the Rolex to make like a little fancy accent yarn, or mm -hmm. I oh, okay. use the Rolex in my art yarn. And so they don't use it. For so now we'll no. pack that down. <laughs> I'm your TV I was going to say, that looks like something that would really really turn out if you wanted to. Yeah. So you just kind of would want to use that for like an accent and that hat band. Yeah, you could do that kind of thing. Or something or like that. If you make enough of them, you can make a little shawl. Now we'll put some silk noils in. These I just like to kind of run across the teeth. Once again, a little bit goes a long way. I have about a whole pound of these things. They will probably last me a very long time before I run out. And I've got them dyed all different colors. I still have so they to come dye. blank? It comes like in a big compact punk. I mean, they're really compressed. You gotta sit there and fluff them out. Right. And then you have to soak them for 24 hours before you can even dye them. Otherwise, they get color on the outside and they're white in the middle. Oh, you can open the pores up. And then... Exactly. Whereas, you know, this, I started to get the hang of it. So you see, it's mm -hmm. almost saturated thin. Mm -hmm. But I've gotten better at it since then. But my first couple of batches, they had all the color on the outside and white in the middle. Do those, are those kind of pricey? don't remember how much we paid for these. They aren't too bad because they're waste. Oh, yeah. When they reel the silk, this is the waste left over. But see, it looks like it looks like the little pills on your sweater. Oh. And it'll add, tw it'll add tweeds oh. to your yarn. <laughs> okay, and then we'll just kind of push those in. And once again, we're using the softer brush, not the heavy duty one. We tap them in there and we'll put a little more of our plain wool on here. You can put locks on this. You can use different colors. It's almost like painting. You can sit there and just put the colors all over. And I just kind of use really my... You must have to like the person you're doing that for. Well... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when you Does go to buy... Does anybody do anything for anybody else? Know, I'm just saying. Not when you go to buy roll eggs, that's why they cost a little bit more wow. because they take more hand processing to yes. do. Like you can... And they also have a lot of stuff. These will have a lot of silk in them. And silk is not cheap. No. So... So now you can use the heavier brush. You, yeah, because I put the wool over it. And now I'll do heavier. Now let's put some sorry silk in. Now, is that short draft or long draft? It's probably medium. Okay. And this is actually shredded up sari material from the Indian ladies' mm -hmm. sari. That stuff is cool. Oh my gosh, yeah. I've got it in all different colors. <laughs> I have some that's like mixed colors too. It's like this really dark almost iridescent royal blue and then it's got other colors run through and it's so cool I love working with it but it's another one a little bit goes a long way and you said it sometimes makes things harder to spin yeah it can be a little if it's too different from the draft of your wool it can make it a little harder to draft. thank you to draft <laughs> we, a lot of free yeah, oh, I do too. And you, you have definitely to. have to pre draft with this. It depends stuff. how much you want to pull on the fiber. If you don't want yeah. to pull, you pre draft it all the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let the wheel do it. Yeah. Sarah, I can totally see you getting into this and vibing well, with that blending have, board. I have the, the drum carter, and I told her I've never, I used it once because I didn't know how to clean it when I was done. I didn't know how to get my fiber off, so she showed us. Now she knows. <laughs> so now I'm like, I need to get that thing back down. 
I didn't know you had a drum carter. Yeah. I'm, and I learned my stuff. He could probably help you with your drum carter, oh. too. I could help you with your drum carter. <laughs> There's... Well, she probably... You're, you're definitely well informed now. Yeah. She yeah. probably gave you all the info you need. There's not we'll a lot see. to it, really. Yeah, there's not really. Okay. <laughs> I'll check. I mean, you do get better at it the more you do it. Like, my bats have definitely improved. <laughs> they get... But you don't always want them smooth. Like right. that little one that we made there. That mm -hmm. one is not smooth. And it's not going to spin smooth. That's something you got to look at. Whereas that striped one we made there, mm -hmm. that one's going to make a nice, fine, even wool or yarn that you can mm -hmm. get pretty fine. Whereas so you that small spin it pretty one and that pink fine one. Then? Is you, could. Fine? Mm -hmm. you could. You could spin it heavier too. It's just. The one with all the stuff in it, that pink one, you're not going to get a smooth, even yarn off of that. No, no. You got to keep that in junk. mind when you're buying bats. Yeah, that, that's true. If they have locks in them, a lot of times they'll label them as art bats if they're not going to spin smooth. So how much yarn do you think you can get out of that blue one? Blue one that striped one? Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess that that's probably about maybe three to three and a half ounces. I didn't bring a scale to weigh it. So you, if you spun it fine, you could probably get about 250 yards, maybe. Wow. You'd have to spin it pretty fine, yes. though. Sometimes it can't you get it too fine, where the fiber just does not going to work well. Some fibers do spin fine easier mm -hmm. than others. Like if you're using a down type wool, it's a little trickier to get that fine. Whereas if you've got a long wool, mm -hmm. like a Lester long wool or a Lincoln, or those kind of breeds that a lot of people think of as being too coarse, they yeah. spin down to make lace weight yarn very nicely. Okay, now we're going to add our Stelina. I haven't, but you can. Use a charka. <laughs> yeah. For the down. Like the Sarah was my little. sister Sarah was just saying she kind of liked to try one of those. Oh, we have they a, are addicting. We have a friend who has one, so I told her I said, "Why don't you ask Carol if you could borrow hers and try it before you go out and buy one?" Yeah. Because she has a tendency to just go buy something just to try it, and then she doesn't I like it, and then she has to try to unload it. And I love them because they're <laughs> extremely be like, portable. Yeah, you can it. take it out on the so on the like deck and do it outside in the summer. Okay, now you uh -huh. asked me what is that. It's a type of spinning wheel, and I don't know a lot about them, mm -hmm. but they spin cotton with them a lot. Okay. So the box charka, they just, they, a lot of them are made in India, and they just recycle like boxes, like wooden boxes, cigar type boxes, and um, it folds open, and then it has, you know, a place to where you can spin Take your hand and spin on the lever and then it has a another part where you draft your cotton and so with one hand you're spinning and the other hand you're drafting and wow. you can literally draft it all the way out as far as your arm can reach wow. because it spins <laughs> it puts so much um, twist into the fibers i'll have to look that up because i've never heard of that process i mean they're before. addictive because it's so easy to just take outside it's great to do in the mornings, especially when there's humidity in the air, because the humidity helps the fibers come off a lot finer off the the comb top if you're using comb top. Um, you can also use a a special roll, like they do special, I forget what they're called, but they have special roll eggs. But they don't call them roll eggs, they call them something else. Yeah, ponies. I bought some of those. I'm not sure what the difference is of how you make them. The ponies is rolled real tight. I, and there's I, not okay. as much fiber on there. Okay. I thought a pony was more like, um... Right, let's put a little more of this roving. stuff in. The silk naps. I don't know. It's kind of like a form of preparation. Yeah. Don't they make them on the hand carters, usually? You can, yeah. Okay. But you want to, if you do it, you do it with the cotton card, because the okay. cotton card is, I think it's 200, 200 to 250 teeth per inch. Yeah. I spun that they're very fine and they're really long too. The carters are, the hand cards are I think twice the width. Man, this is looking so amazing. <laughs> there, wow. 
Okay, put that in there, just a little more wool, and then we'll start pulling them off. Just to hold those in so they don't oh, fall that's, out. That's a good, you know, that was worth the price of admission right there. That tip. <laughs> like put the wool. Yeah, inside. put the put the pretty yeah. stuff inside the wool. Yeah. Put all the little bits inside. Yeah. I love that's why I do it in layers and I found that works the best. Plus it gets your goodies distributed through your yarn better. I just was spinning one earlier and all the goodies were on the outside of the bat and the whole inside of the bat was just plain wool. Which Sometimes you want it that way, but if you want your sparkle and your silk spread out, do it in layers. So if I couldn't afford a drum carter, but I had one of these blending boards, because I use it in cooperation with hand cards, with um, locks of wool to open up them with the hand cards and then put them on the blending board to get like a makeshift bat. You certainly could. I made, <laughs> I just spun some yarn. I didn't bring that one with me because that was a commission that I spun for someone and that's exactly what I did is ah, I took I never thought of getting a blending spin, board and I did this and I just peel it all off in one piece and I got a little mini bat yes and that I would make kept me doing happy that. what I did is I kind of split up the stuff I wanted to blend into it and then split up the braid into four or five pieces and you know however many pieces you want to do it in and then just pull the whole thing off but we're going to pull off Rolex and this I'm going to say right now is kind of tricky and I usually use two dowels but I only brought one you got to kind of getting it started is the hardest part draft it a bit There we go. But you don't want to go. There you go. Because see, that's starting to catch and draft oh, okay. off the yeah. teeth. Because yeah. I usually get four decent sized roll eggs off. Yeah, this is so much easier when I have both my dowels. Looks like you're kind of manhandling that just a little. <laughs> yeah, be he's, aggressive. Yeah, yeah, you do have to. Oh, I get what. So, okay, so there's yeah. one. All right. gonna... So you're not rolling it off. You're. You kind of draft it as you roll, yeah. pull it off. Oh. I don't know. I, it's tricky, and I know I could improve my technique of doing it. Practice makes perfect. Yes, exactly. It's one of those things. The more you do it, the well, more it you makes... practice. Then you kind of just roll them back here on the board and that neats and neatens them up, closes up the edges. And then if you have two dowel pins, you can pull one out and then they come right off. But I didn't make this one too tight. So you just pull it off and there's your roll egg. And you can spin right from that. A lot of people like the roll eggs if they're doing the wool and spun. No, you just start right here on this end and just yeah, kind of Yeah, you just draft start out. on the end and start drafting it out. That's not what I imagined at all. No. <laughs> no, he he was asking me about making a bat right off this. Yeah. Can you hand me That's that little blue I... handle brush there? Thank you. I thought you were going to just roll up your bat, basically. Yeah, that's kind of what Well, I'm we'll do that with the rest. This I makes sense like because if you spin off of this, twins. if you draft <laughs> off of this and then you spin off of this, then that has two more steps for all the fibers to blend together, right? Because mm -hmm. when you draft it off, everything gets blended together really well and then when you spin off of this it's even blended even more yeah that makes sense and then when you fly or you can if you can't afford a drum carter because drum carters are rather expensive I never thought of getting you one can of get these a blending board to do bats i have a friend who pulls roving off of these hmm. she starts at one corner and just well she gets her diz out and just starts pulling it off I tried it once and it's like that's more effort than I want to put in. But see, here's your. That's what I thought you were going to do. There's your mini bat. Oh, okay. look at the little mini bat. It feels different <laughs> yes. because you didn't pull it again. Right. Yeah. See? Right. It's yeah. a little softer. Mm -hmm. yeah. it feels, you feel different. Interesting. Mm -hmm.